Welcome back. Today I'm taking a look at the Claris G15 version 2. Let's check it out. This is everything that comes with the Claris G15 version 2. Give you guys a look at this box. This is the typical lumens and runtime information. It also comes with a lanyard, an 18650 battery adapter, a spare O-ring, a USB Type-C to Type-C charging cable, a USB Type-C to Type-A and a Type-C to Lightning adapter because yes, the G15 version 2 is a power bank and I'll be testing that out a little bit later on as well. Here's your user manual, warranty information and some product information. And since it doesn't come with the holster, they give you a pouch here. A uh, pretty nice pouch. I'm not really sure how I feel about that substitution, but what can you do? And then of course, the Claris G15 version two itself. And I'll give you guys a nice close up of this bad boy right here. And while you guys are checking this out, let's talk about some of the features. So the new G15 version two has a maximum output of 4,200 lumens, a maximum throwing distance of 200 meters and an intensity of 10,000 candela. Now those are upgrades over the original G15's 4,000 lumens and 188 meters of throw. It features five lighting modes plus three special modes. And those modes are strobe, SOS, and a beacon. It also has a mode memory and a button press lockout. It has a USB Type-C fast charging port on the outside of the flashlight, which is an upgrade over the original G15's micro USB port. It has a single side switch with a four level battery life indicator. And yes, that is a boot up battery life indicator. The emitter is a Cree XHP70 version two that has a cool white 6500 Kelvin beam. The body's made from aluminum, is impact resistant up to one meter, has a waterproof rating of IPX8, which means the dust proofing wasn't tested, and the eight means it's submersible in up to six feet of water, and it comes with a five-year warranty. All right, let's talk dimensions. It has a length of 4.75 inches, a head diameter of 1.08 inches, and a body diameter of 1.02 inches. And according to my weight test, it comes in at 5.1 ounces. That's 144.58 grams. And yes, I did weigh it with the battery. So far, I'm really digging the Claris G15 version two. I think it's a great size for EDC, even though it's right there on the edge of being too large. Um, my time with it, I'm actually really liking this light. It feels really great in the hands. Typical Claris quality here. Right around the body, it has these grooves that feel very nice when you're holding it. It does not feel like it's just gonna slip around when you're holding it. There's no knurling around the tail cap, but you can see that tail cap is flat, which is perfect for tail standing, which is definitely a positive in my book. Just because half the time I'm pointing that light at the ceiling so I can light up everything around me. Now you guys can get a good look at that beam right here on my desk. Yes, it is a 6,500 Kelvin beam, a cool white beam. I prefer more of a neutral white beam, but typically you have to go with that cool white beam if you wanna get the maximum lumens out of a flashlight. But coming back to the body here, yeah, it does have a pretty large single side switch right there, which is, recessed into the body there, you can see it's nice and flat and even pushed in just a little bit right there. You can see it has a chrome collar around that side switch, so the button sits within that collar. And the button feels very clicky. It has a nice feel to that button, and it's not a plastic button. It has a nice rubberized feel. And I already mentioned it has a boot up battery life LED right there in the center of that side switch. Now, I already mentioned it doesn't come with the holster, but it does come with this fabric pouch. And like I said, I'd rather have a holster than that fabric pouch. That fabric pouch is basically useless to me. But I do like the fact that it comes with this removable split ring pocket clip right here. And there is some nice tension on this pocket clip. It is a lens down pocket clip and there's no way that I can see to flip this around. Now I'll give you a look right down the barrel at that single Cree XHP70 version two emitter right there. And while we're at the head, you can see there is no crenellated bezel. The lens sits down just slightly within the head. And then if you can see that reflector, that is a textured reflector. Now this is more of a floody flashlight and you're gonna see that when I do my beam test a little bit later on. And right on the opposite side of that side switch is a USB type C charging port that's hidden underneath this rubber flap here. It is a fast charging USB type C port and it actually acts as a power bank as well. And that's one of my favorite features of this flashlight. This is a type C to type C charging cable, but they also give you these adapters, a type C to type A adapter, but the one that I need for my iPhone 
the Type-C to lightning adapter. So just plug in your cable to the flashlight here, and then if you have an iPhone, your lightning adapter right to your phone and check that out. It's charging my phone. I absolutely love this feature. Now I do have a couple other flashlights that have a power bank feature, but only a few of them work. A few of them just never work out of the box. So I'm glad to say that this does work out of the box. Great. And now let's check out the battery that comes with the G15 version two. It is a Claris branded 5,000 milliamp hour, 3.6 volt, 21 700. And there are dual springs, one at the head. Not sure if you guys can see down in there and then one right here at the tail. Now, while I'm here at the tail cap, I wanna mention that I was sort of wishing this was magnetic. It's not a magnetic tail cap, even though it's flat right here. And I do like the fact that it can tail stand. I sort of wish they give us some kind of magnetic mounting feature here. For me, that would have been above and beyond. I wasn't really expecting it to have a magnetic mounting tail cap, but it just would have been Really cool to see that, maybe in a version three. But getting back to the battery here, even though it does come with a 21700, they give you this 18650 battery adapter. Now this will take any 18650 battery or two CR123A batteries. But just so you know, if you use an 18650 battery or two CR123A batteries, you will lose performance. So how much performance will you lose? Well, let's go over the lumens and runtime information here. So I'll pop up the graph right here on the screen. You can see turbo is 4,200 lumens. It has a maximum runtime of three hours. Um, I'm gonna test that out in a little bit. I doubt it has a three hour turbo runtime. And what I find sketchy is there's no asterisk right there. Generally, you'll see that with a disclaimer saying that's the total runtime from turbo all the way till the dead battery happens. But let's move down the list. High is 2000 lumens, medium is 500 lumens, low is 100 and moonlight is one lumen. Now I just read that off the back of the box here, one lumen moonlight, but here in the user manual is telling me that there is a 10 lumen moonlight mode. So I'm not sure which one's true, the one lumen moonlight mode right there on the back of the box or the 10 lumen moonlight mode that's stated in their user manual. And if I do a quick desk test with moonlight, that looks more like 10 lumens to me. That does not look like a one lumen moonlight mode. So Claris, I would suggest either you change your box right there or change your user manual right there because it has to be one or the other. I'm guessing it's 10 lumens. But other than that, I think the mode spacing here is great. If moonlight is 10, then you have that 100 lumen low, 500 on medium, 2000 for high, and 4200 on turbo. I think the mode spacing is perfect. And now we go to strobe, 4200 lumens, which is great, maximum lumens on strobe, but then beacon and SOS are only 500 lumens. Now I just reviewed a certain Phoenix flashlight that had a 100 lumen SOS mode, which is very, very curious. Because why would you give me a super weak SOS mode, regardless if I'm trying to save battery power or not? Because if nobody can see my SOS at only 100 lumens, What's the point of having it last a long time if that saves battery power? But 500 seems to be pretty decent here. I've checked that out and that 500 lumen seems to be bright enough for that SOS and beacon. And I should mention on that moonlight mode, it has 150 hour runtime. That's your maximum runtime for this flashlight. But now let's talk about the performance loss if you use an 18650 battery. On turbo, you're only getting 1200 lumens. On high, you're only getting 500 lumens. On medium, you're getting 200 lumens. On low is 50, and then you're still getting that 10 lumen moonlight mode. And then strobe is 1200, beacon is 200, and SOS is 200. So that's a pretty significant performance loss if you decide to go with an 18650 battery in this flashlight. Now let's talk about the UI. The UI is very similar to Olight's UI, a very simplified user interface. A single short press turns it on and a single short press turns it off. While it's on, just press and hold that side switch and it cycles through low, medium, and high. From off, if you click and hold, there's your moonlight mode. Then from either off or on, you can double press for the maximum turbo 4200 lumens. And from off or on, you can triple click for strobe, triple click again for beacon, and then triple click again for SOS. I already mentioned that it does have a mode memory, so it remembers your last mode that you're on. And it does have a button press lockout. Just press and hold that side switch, it'll flash, there we go. 
Now you're locked out. And just triple click that side switch and it brings it right back. So it has a very simple, easy to remember UI, which I am a big fan of. So now that's out of the way, let's do a heat test on the G15 version two here. So I ran a two minute heat test here. So after about one minute, it came in at 96 degrees at the head and about 80 degrees at the body. And then after two minutes at the head, it was right around 104 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And at the body it was between 87 to 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Now those numbers are very decent. They're actually excellent. Especially at 4,200 lumens, I was expecting at least 120, 130 degrees at the head. And it was only 104 or 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And at the body, that 88 degrees is almost nothing, can barely even feel it. So having this flashlight on turbo for any significant amount of time, I don't think you're gonna need gloves at all. I can handle this with my bare hands, no problem. Now let's do a turbo test. I let this run for about three minutes and I'm just gonna speed up the footage just so you guys can easily see that step down. And then I'll put a picture side by side of when I first started turbo after one minute, after two minutes, and then after three minutes, so you can see the difference. All right, so let's start on low. There is low. You see that tree right there? It's already kissing those trees. Very, very nice. Let's go to medium. All right. And as expected, this is a very, very floody beam profile. Even at 200 meters, it's not really claiming to be a thrower. Now that barn right there, that pole barn is about 109 meters away. That back tree line is about 114 meters away. And this is high 2000 lumens. Let's go right to turbo. You can see, there we go. Now I'm starting to see those trees in the back. Um, you see the hot spot though, it just blends right into the perimeter as most floody beam profiles do, but Oh man, I've already lost a little bit of that output. I just saw it dim a little bit. So the turbo doesn't last very long. Um, like I said, 109, 114. Cool white beam, but very nice even look to this beam profile. I actually really like it. And for an EDC flashlight, I do want that floody, that floody outer perimeter which is very sharp too. Check that out. If I just keep the camera still, very nice. So I'm gonna walk around the field here and show you guys some different shots. So overall, 
I think the G15 version 2 is an excellent choice for an everyday carry flashlight. It's plenty bright with those 4200 lumens. The 200 meters of throw I think is just perfect because I'm not really looking for throw with my everyday carry flashlight. I want that flooding beam and this definitely delivers. I love the power bank feature and the fact that they give you a lightning adapter for your iPhone is fantastic. Some changes or upgrades I'd like to see with the version 3 is if it does have that 10 lumen moonlight mode, regardless if it's 10 or one, the moonlight is too bright. I want a one lumen or a half lumen moonlight mode. Also, I'm not the biggest fan of cool white LEDs with my everyday carry flashlights. I like neutral white. So I'd say give us a choice with the version three, either neutral white, or cool white. And one last small suggestion for a version three is, if you're gonna give us this flat tail cap, make it magnetized so we can mount this to the hood of a car or whatever. I think if Claris made those changes, this would be in my pocket every single day. But as it stands, it's still a very solid choice, especially at 89.95, under 90 bucks for 4,200 lumens. You can't go wrong here. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. What do you think of the Claris G15 version two? Now, if you wanna check this out for yourself, I will have links down below in my description box. But if you did enjoy this video, please give me that thumbs up. Please subscribe. And go!